What up gamers? I'm Jason. I'm Julie. And today on Dice and Dragons we are going to be doing a top 10 list. This is the top 10 games that we reviewed in 2020. Now, just a little bit of information about this list. We have excluded all small box expansions. Big box expansions are eligible. And sorry for being a little late with this one. We wanted to get it out a few weeks ago, but uh, we had to take it easy. I wasn't able to actually sit at a table, record, or play a game. But we're back and we're getting it out before we get too far into 2020. Now, Julie, how are we gonna be doing this video? So we're going to do it in two parts. We're gonna do number uh, six through 10, or 10 through six, and then for five through one, uh, obviously finishing with uh, our number one reviewed game of 2020. Yes, and to change things up, we're gonna discuss if these games should even be on this top 10 list as we take a look back at all of them. Now, all the games on this list are based on our review score, and we had a well, funny enough, we actually were thinking about doing our bottom games as well. We really didn't have any. We had a fairly good 2020 in terms of games that we played. And all of the games up until the top three have the same score. They got an aggregate score of 7.75 between Julie and myself. So we've gone ahead and we've organized them in the order that we feel they should be in besides the top three. So let's get into it. We've got Pendulum by Stonemeyer Games, designed by Travis Jones at the number 10 slot. So Julie, should this still be on our list? So for me, I think this should be replaced by Wingspan, personally. Uh, when we played Wingspan, uh, we played it um, with just one version. I think uh, playing the Oceana expansion uh, brought it up a little bit for me and I had uh, more experience playing it four player as well. I did enjoy playing this one, uh, Pendulum, at four player, but I think if I were to redo, if we were to do the um, review of Wingspan after having played all the expansion, I think I would have given it a different score. Yeah, but I have to disagree with you though because Wingspan itself got a lower score than Pendulum. Wingspan with an expansion is not the same thing as just Pendulum. So to, to that point, I do give Pendulum a little bit of an edge over Wingspan. That being said, I do think that there is a chance that this could slip off our list after playing it again because we really only got a chance to play it uh, once at four players. It was a lot of fun, and depending on if that experience holds up, I do think it could slide off the list. I just don't agree with you that Wingspan would be the game to take its place, but I will agree with you that... This may not be our number 10 game. Well, I think this experience has also told me that I think we need to... Maybe I need, maybe I need to, maybe we need to start being a little bit more discerning with our scoring. <laughs> <laughs> so that we don't end up with this situation again in 2021. So we've got like seven or eight games with all the same score? Yep. So there you have it. That's Pendulum, our number 10 game. We had a lot of fun with this. This is definitely not leaving our collection. I think we both agree that it is definitely one of the best games that we played this year, but maybe not worthy of the top 10 list. Now, here's a surprise. I really did not think this is going to make the list. So I, I'm going to try to get the names right. That's over there. We've got I could the hide on by points. Tabula Games by, I'm gonna mangle the, the names. So you know what? The names are gonna pop up on the screen just because it's hard to uh, remember them when we're grabbing the boxes, but uh, take it away, Julie. Ikeon, this cool worker placement game, a competitive game, and it's on our list, and we love co-ops. Well, actually, that's, like, that's two competitive games in a row now. Uh, this game surprised me. I had fun with it. I, I loved the components, I think was one of the things. I, I thought it had a great table presence, uh, and it surprised me in the sense that I didn't uh, hate playing a competitive game against you. Uh, it was it was fun. Um, so I think it still has its place. Uh, I honestly am surprised at the number of competitive games that ended up in our uh, top 10, uh, but won't spoil it. We'll see what else uh, shows up. Uh, but I think this still deserves to be here. I think it was uh, a different type of worker placement that was uh, was fun. And uh, like I said, great table presence. No, I absolutely love Ikeon. I enjoyed Miss Thea, found it to be a little long. Ikeon is the exact game. Well, they're two different games, but Ikeon gives you a similar experience to Mystia, 
but it's streamlined, it's fun, it works well. The fact that you have the ability to combine it with Mystia to play the cooperative game, this is just a blast, and if you have Mystia, it is a must-have. If you have enjoyed any of Tabula games and you like worker placement games, you also love games, as Julie mentioned, with great components, this is something you're gonna have a lot of fun with getting to the table. Also, the teardown and setup is not that difficult. And if anything, I'm wondering if we played this more times or you've got a chance to play with more players, this might not have gone higher up on the list because we really only got a chance to play it with two players. We played this early on in the year and I remember looking at Julie and asking her, should this leave the collection? Because uh, I knew a few people that were looking for it and she said, nope, you gotta keep it. So I was quite surprised. Yep. And yep. So, definitely worthy of the spot on the list. It is our number nine. So, nope. Oh, no, no. Wrong one. Well, I thought we were going back and forth. No, kept it all in the same spot just to make it easier. So, this is not a box. We're going to use a little bit of magic. Unfortunately, I don't have a wand. But this is now going to change into the box for Harry Potter, Hogwarts Battle, Charms, and Potion. Now, this is a big box expansion for... Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle is designed by Cammy Mandel and published by The Op Games. So Julie, does this deserve to be on our list? Yes, and if it was up to me, it'd be a little bit higher on the list, but uh, we negotiated. This uh, Hogwarts Battle is one of my favorite games. I love it, and I think uh, Charms and Potions fixes a lot of the issues. Uh, that it's, we... It starts to. It starts I think to. it fixes a lot of the issues. I had a blast. I was not feeling well the weekend we played this game. Uh, and still we played, uh, we played it a lot. Yes, because you a kept lot. wanting to play. You wanted to finish it. it. Anytime this hits the table, she has to finish it almost in one sitting. Uh, so, I mean, if you've enjoyed, uh, if you enjoyed Harry Potter Hogwarts Bottle, definitely Charms and Potions is way up there. Uh, and it's the best expansion. I think we both agree it's the best expansion. I definitely believe that this uh, has a place in the top 10 of our reviews. And like I said, it wouldn't be number eight. It'd be a little bit higher. Uh, on my the list if it was up to me. Well, until the game slims down the deck of cards so it's a little bit more playable, it's always going to be sort of in the bottom 10 for me, but definitely it belongs on the list. We've had a lot of fun with Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle. Charms and Potion is a nice way to refresh the game, adds a lot of cool new content, and the missions that you get to play use all the content from both of the, uh, well, the base game and even the Monsters expansion, and it just flows really well. You still want to do a few things, like maybe make sure you don't get the top part of the Hogwarts set full of the crappy year one, two, and three cards, but other than that, you're going to have a lot of fun with the game and just the way that everything works, brewing potions, the way the potions themselves work, and those abilities to be able to use them right away really makes the game, I think, just a little bit more manageable, especially when you're fighting some of those more challenging Death Eaters. Now, the only unfortunate part is that, and this is probably the other reason why I've got it a little bit lower, is that Charms and Potions is separate from the base game. You can't really use that Charm board. Well, I guess you could try to adapt it with, like, Year 7 from Harry Potter. It's really its own thing. So, belongs on the list. Don't think it would have slid up. Well, definitely will never slide up because you love Hogwarts Battle. But number eight, Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle Charms and Potions. So I'm going to remove the spell. It's now the regular Hogwarts Battle box. And we'll bring something else out. So number seven for me was a surprise. This was probably the biggest surprise well, no, maybe not the biggest surprise, but it was one of the biggest surprises we had this year because I really was not sure about Cowboy Bebop Space Serenade, designed by Don't Panic Games and published by Japanime Games. When we saw this, I was like, "So Jason, Jason, is said, this going to be good? It's semi co-op." Jason says we said we're going to play a semi cooperative Cowboy Bebop game, and I think I gave him a giant eye roll and I probably a big sigh and thought. Again, okay, the things you make me do for the channel. Yeah, well, we played the original, well, not the original, we played the cooperative Cowboy Bebop game, and while that was an incredibly thematic and well-designed game, it just really didn't scratch the cooperative itch that we wanted from the game. So bringing this back to the table with me being the fan, I was like, ooh, how's this one going to go over? But I was surprised. It was actually uh, it was actually a lot of fun, and probably the reason why my score was as high as it was for this is because of how surprised I was. 
at the fact that it is uh, semi-cooperative. We're not really cooperating, but we're not really fighting against each other. But it was fun, and I enjoyed the fact that it had minis, and it's it's different. I like the fact uh, that you know you're going between the different planets. Uh, I had fun with it, and and a, a pleasant surprise, I think I'd say for 2020. Yes, and the way the take that element works in the game is very low. You're not going to really be screwing over other players, which works well with the way that we like to play games. And just overall, like the the boards as well, like the production value, everything is off the charts in this game. And if you're a Cowboy Bebop fan, this is the Cowboy Bebop game to get. Just what a surprise getting this game. And I have to say, this is not going to be leaving the collection at all. It's even got a solo mode. I haven't tried it, but... Anything that can be played at, you know, I can play by myself. We can play easily together with two players and have a great time. Gotta love it. So, number six. So, number six, we've got Project Elite, published by Simon Games and Artipia Games. The designers are on the box. I'm going to forget their names, but... You will see them popping up somewhere on the screen because I want to give credit to all the designers, but it's just not easy bringing the boxes out. So for me, the re one of the reasons, if I remember correctly, why this one got uh, the scores that it did to, to put, land it in the top 10 uh, and almost pierce the top five. Uh, first of all, it's minis. Uh, it's cooperative. But most of all, they had some, and I'm sorry, not very PG-13 language. Well, PG-13, not PG. <laughs> kick-ass female characters and uh it was a lot of fun <laughs> i got to uh blow up a lot of aliens uh i was the one really blowing things up and jason was coming behind and patching us up uh it was it was fun i had a lot of fun blowing up aliens yes uh this was one of our first experiences with a real-time game uh the way the frantic pace worked with the timer was something that I don't think either of us were really sure we were going to enjoy, but it worked really well, especially at the, the two-player count. We were just chucking dice, shooting aliens, doing everything we can, and with all of the expansions that we got because we did back the Kickstarter, we had so many cool choices, and this was just a lot of fun. And I can see how the game couldn't get messy if you go all the way up to the max six, char six characters, well, six players, but at... Four players, I think you're going to get an amazing experience. Another one that we really want to get to the table when we can finally host Game Night. I mean, we got the perfect table for dice chucking madness on it now. So there you have it. This is our number six, Julie. So now what should we be doing? We're going to uh, use some TV magic and we'll be back with our top five reviewed games of 2020. And we're back with number five. We've got Tainted Grail designed by Martin Spearcock and published by Awaken Realms. So Julie, why is Tainted Grail number five? Well, it is a game that we spent a lot of time playing. And we still haven't finished our first campaign, by the way. We haven't? No, we only got through chapter two. Remember we got lost for about two chapters worth of content? Ah, uh, yes, yes, And then yes. we were very frustrated until we finally got where we needed to go. And then you aced like three challenges and you're like, I'm overpowered! Woohoo! Yeah, so it has a great story component to it. Uh, we, we, do, we do love our... Um, narrative games. Narrative games, I was Even though we say. don't have enough time to play them all anymore. Uh, but, so this one, this one was great for that. I love uh, the whole... Um, idea of Avalon, the whole story of Avalon. So this was, this was fun. Um, and, uh, yeah, again, you got the minis, you got all the components of, you know, battling, uh, uh monsters and playing cooperatively together. It was just a, a great game that is a bright up our alley. So I'm not surprised it's, you know, in our top 10. Yeah, this is definitely one of the best games that we, we played. Had a lot of fun with this. We've had a lot of discussion about getting it back to the table, but we've been trying to keep pushing forward with new content. Actually, this game is one of the reasons why we have this table, because games like this get put aside when we've got smaller other games to review, and then we just don't happen to set them back up and continue playing. So we've now got the vault and the table. So hopefully we're gonna be finishing this, but we did do a poll recently, and all of you out there seem to want us to play Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion, so, That'll be our next big campaign game that we play. Don't know if we're going to finish it. We'll try to get through a large chunk of it before we uh, tear it down. But uh, yeah, Tainted Grail, lots of fun. Love the minis. 
Love the production value of the game. We went all in. We've got all the content. We've got three more old campaigns. I mean, I think this is one of those games we're going to be playing actually for a few years when I think about it. It's kind of crazy when you think about years in terms of trying to get through a game. I just can't see us after finishing this one starting another campaign this year. But you never know. We've got the future and the past of Avalon to play. So just with all the content that came with the base pledge and the amount of fun that we had just traveling around the island of Avalon and exploring and that, that creepy lore as to what's going on, I'm really curious how the main campaign is going to end as well as that future and the past. So Tainted Grail, great addition. I don't think... I think it's perfectly positioned in the five spot. I do. I agree. So number four was a surprise. It is Atlantis Rising 2nd Edition, published by Elf Creek Games. And the designer's names are on the back, so I can peek here. It is designed by Galen Sissel and Brent Dickman. I had a lot of fun. I think this was one of the highest ratings I gave a game last year. Uh, in 2020. I really enjoyed playing this. I, I think this was the game that taught you that you like worker placement. Well, I think I knew it. I think it just really convinced me. Yeah, because this was the co-op. This was our first ever cooperative worker placement game. And working cooperatively, placing those workers, just the joy on your face. You love the production value. So I told you I backed the expansion. Just because you love them, I bought you the playmat too. Yeah, that's fun. I like play math. So this was uh, honestly, I just loved it. I loved the, the 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 fact that it's a worker placement cooperative. I loved the uh, the different production value of it. Uh, I, it was just a lot of fun uh, and different. I wasn't expecting it. I also want to highlight the push for diversity that they made with this. All of the character tiles are double sided, so. You can play a male or female character of any class. It doesn't matter. And I think that's one of the things that's really cool. And it's a really nice touch. And it just shows a lot of respect towards, you know, all gamers out there. And we need more. We need more of that. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like my tough, beefy male guys. I like my quick female fighters sometimes. But it's nice when you're going to be playing a, just an artificer that you can play male or female, and it doesn't matter. I think more games really should do that. Agreed. So that's Atlantis Rising 2nd Edition. In the number four position. Yes, in the number four position. So we're now moving on to number three, and I'm going to have to use a little bit of the magic of the Ishtari because we no longer have the box. The components are all in this box. It is the big box expansion for the Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-Earth, and... Poof! It is now the box for Shadowed Pass. This is our number three. So this is the first game that actually broke the 7.75 score. This got a score of 8.25, almost tying it with our top two games. We have had lots of fun with the Lord of the Ring, uh, Lord of the Rings games. Uh, I am always excited when a new campaign becomes available and we have probably spent more hours in this game than any other game. Uh, it's just really up our alley. We both love the stories uh, and we love the way that this game plays, the campaign, the fact that it's cooperative, the fact that we're it's app assisted for the cooperative version. Uh, and I just, you know, this, this particular expansion had some great new characters uh, and I love the story. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm not surprised for position number one and two, but I definitely uh, do think this one was a contender for that top spot, those top spots as well. I mean, it is a, the bronze medal winner of uh, 2020, uh, and for good reason. I mean, we've talked about it a lot. If you've been watching the channel, we definitely love this Lord of the Rings uh, oh, game. Cannot wait for more content for this. And as Julie mentioned, in this box, you get Gandalf and Arwen. And gotta say, Arwen hits like a truck. I remember asking Julie to play, play Arwen when we started the campaign. She said, no. So I said, fine, I'll play the healer. Uh, she's a healer, but she still hits like a truck. Julie kept complaining. She's like, why are you killing everything and healing everything? I'm like, I don't know, but this character is way too much fun. You also get the Balrog in this box, which is just awesome. The trip that you're going to be taking to Mirkwood, Mines of Moria, just brings you back to the first Lord of the Rings book, as well as The Hobbit, and it was just... Such a great campaign with such an interesting story and 
they so far Fantasy Flight Games has not let us down at all with anything that they've put out for Journeys in Middle Earth. And hopefully we're gonna be getting another big box soon. So love the game. So, and just because I forgot to mention earlier, the game is designed by Nathan Hadjik and Grace Holdinghouse, just so I don't have to make those names pop up on the screen. And yeah, we're gonna be buying everything for Journeys in Middle Earth. And even though we have no time, somehow when a new box comes out, 14 or 15 missions get played in about a week. <laughs> Yeah, Little Man was really young when this uh, last one came out, so I'm hoping that he'll allow us to play. He's he's at an age where uh, he's not interested in games yet, well, besides knocking everything on the floor, um, but hopefully we'll get to play when it comes out. All right, so, Julie, bring out our number two. So the exception, the uh, expansion that made it to the number two spot. Well, don't forget we just had an expansion in number three spot, but this is... A big box expansion. So this is Marvel Champions The Rise of the Red Skull and I'm drawing a blank on the designer so they will be popping up on screen as well. Now the reason why this qualified it added two new heroes, multiple new villains and an entirely new mode for the game, the campaign mode. I don't think this would have qualified if it hadn't been for the campaign mode. Yeah, I mean, we uh, there's no there's there's no secret we have really enjoyed playing Marvel Champions. Uh, we've done we've gotten every expansion and reviewed every uh, expansion that's come out, every new champion and every new villain. Uh, we really love this game, uh, and this uh, expansion really uh, rose to the occasion and brought us a lot of new content that was really a lot of fun. Yeah, no, this this is belongs in the top two spot. If this was actually like the first box for the game, this might have been number one, but uh, we really do want to give our number one spot to. Well, an it doesn't get missing. it anyways from a score perspective. No, it was tied. They were oh. tied. Oh. Eight point, both of the last game number two, 8.5, and game number one both had the highest score that we gave aggregate of 8.5. But Rise of the Red Skull, a lot of fun. If you haven't picked this up, this is the best expansion by far for the game. Hawkeye and Spider-Woman play great as heroes. They're two that I didn't really think I would want to have in the game. I was kind of like, Hawkeye, Spider-Woman, couldn't you get me some more interesting heroes? But surprisingly enough, I had a lot of fun with them. And I remember when Julie's like, is Hawkeye fun? And then you played him, you're like, oh wait, he actually is fun. And I had a lot of fun with Spider-Woman and her status effects. The way that she's just able to control the villains is very cool. And of course, you get to take on the Red Skull, so... Who doesn't want to do that? Especially if you have a Captain America pack. You want to punch his face in with Cap. That's just, you know, it's what you do. Yep. So. On that note. Belongs in the spot. No congestion. No, no. I think so it's. So our number one game and probably the biggest surprise. Oh, definitely. And also the biggest box. Yeah. Do we have to hold it to make sure it doesn't fall over? Is Tokyo Sidekick published by Japan Anime Games and designed by Little Future and think it's Yusuke something on the front of the box. I should have looked when you picked it up, but I missed it. It'll pop up on the screen. So for me, definitely the biggest surprise of the year. I loved, first of all, I love the table presence with these uh, the acrylic standees. Acrylic standees. I don't typically like standees, but these acrylic standees were awesome. And I was really surprised about how much I enjoyed the way this game plays. You were very skeptical when I talked about Tokyo Sidekick. You knew you were going to like it. You are like, superheroes, but anime style, cooperative. Look on her face was like, I, I'm probably going to enjoy this. We should definitely play this. But you were definitely not sold on this game. No, and it's, uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I know you gave it a higher score than I did uh, when we did the review, but, um, you know, speaking to, to people afterwards, we've definitely spoken very highly of this game, uh, so it's no surprise that it's in the number one position for 2020. Uh, it definitely belongs, at, you know, in that top, in that, at least in the top three position for sure. Um, but it, it was a lot of fun and it, you know, we keep talking about the fact that it needs to get back to the table. We've been extremely busy and have a backlog of games that we need to review. Yes. We've gotten a lot of review copies. So to all you publishers that have supported us, 
Thank you very much. It does keep us from playing some of the games we really want to play, but we love it anyway, and we are working hard to get through uh, that backlog of games, and don't worry, we're going to be getting caught up here shortly, and then maybe you even get some lookbacks on the channel in the near future. Well, kind of like we're doing now, this is kind of a look back on 2020, right? Yes. So, again, great game. Uh, check it out. Actually, I'm going to skip ahead and say something that Jason normally uh, normally says uh, and say that we have a link below uh, to uh, multizone. Uh, .ca where any of these games that we reviewed you could if you decide that you'd like to pick it up you can use our link and get 10% off and a portion of the proceeds of the sale will come back to us to help support the channel yes and Same. on that note as well Jason are you gonna make a list back to all of our reviews at the down below yes yeah, so sorry about that I'm resting my arm because that's what <laughs> what I heard so yes I will have a, a list for all the reviews and the scores down below in the video description. If it's not up there the day that the video releases because I do have it on Excel sheet and that just means Excel is being a giant pain in the butt for me copying and pasting it, but it will be there eventually. And just to talk a little bit more about Tokyo Sidekick, what we really loved about the game was the way that you upgrade characters, the way you have to work together with your the other player as well as your sidekick and that is the thing that i think is very different compared to all the other superhero games that we've played no other game had us really working with a sidekick and they all have different abilities and you can pair them up in so many different ways which gives you just a ton of replayability even though you're still really on the same map and the same board which doesn't really bother me at all uh we got a this is a pre-production copy so we don't have the best insert but Love the Sandies, love the deck building element as well, that you're buying those different cards to trigger your powers. And just the way the game works, it's a lot of fun. And if you like Pandemic, but you don't really, well, if you've been interested in Pandemic, but you don't like the theme of Pandemic, well, this plays a little similar to that. You're running around the city putting out fires, and except when you've got big bad stuff happening, it's not diseases, it's villains that you have to punch in the face, which is always a lot more fun for me than curing a disease. Okay. All right. So on that note, I think it's time to remind everybody to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified when we have some new content for you. And take a look down below in the video description because you'll find links to all of our social media feeds. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. If you'd like to see pictures from Julie and I playing all of these games that uh, we covered here, well, they're on those feeds and there's lots of pictures from all of them. And then popping up in front of us, you're going to be seeing links to some of our previously released videos. Over here will be a link to our most recently released content and what should be over here julie how about our top 10 yep so we're going to take you back to our top 10 games of all time list from last year that's something that we're going to have to update not sure it's going to be done in 2021 but uh maybe something that will uh go into in early 2022 and it's time it's that time it's time to grab our drinks yeah we didn't grab it earlier but we'll grab uh, it uh, here peek over here <laughs> cheers <laughs> grab our best friend and well, maybe our sidekick at this point. <laughs> and we're going to keep playing games. going to keep playing games. Looking forward to uh, when this Kickstarter actually gets out and more people get a chance to play it and we get the expansion.